good afternoon everybody uh, good evening actually <laughs> uh, so let us start our class let us uh, look at our schedule so we are happy that we are at the last quarter of this course and most importantly that we have completed more sophisticated and the more difficult content and the remaining content are really fun and if you just keep your eyes and give attention then you will understand the remaining part but the most difficult part will be for your test three because the implementation of uh, recursion method link list stack QE. these are really really difficult because is with this kind of uh, like <coughs> uh, programming experience I'm expecting that most of you are taking like this is as the second programming course okay so you need to do practice so this course is really a swimming class you know so that uh, no matter how many theory books you you study for a swimming class if you do not dive into water you will never know how to swim right there is no exception so in for this course you really need to practice so without practicing that if you memorize codes and then if you think that oh I will be fine writing this code or pseudocode or, or method you will forget and at the moment that you will do some mistake <coughs> okay that you will lose point so uh, as I am posting discussion topics let me see how many of you have how many of you have logged into the uh, D2L for discussion? You? Okay, this is the trial week. One more week. If I see that you are joining, then I will post more questions. But if I see that you are not joining, participating in discussion, then I will not post. So for your section, is three, right? <coughs> Okay, I have put the discussion topics of string operations that are actually on test two, right? In test three, you will not have string operation. In in test three, you will have stack, QE, and linked list operation. Okay, I post this maybe yesterday, but I don't see anyone. Okay, then I post again another question for practicing recursive methods. These three, if you practice these three recursive methods, and if you understand this well, you should get a you may get a similar question that you should be able to do in your test okay practice this problem okay <clears throat> okay so according to our schedule so you have your test three okay one next Tuesday right okay so we have one more class before that this Thursday if you have any question bring that your question in your next class okay so in your test you will have <coughs> week three from questions from week six to week nine you will have recursive parameters mainly call by value and call by re reference you know that I discussed that call by reference is applicable only for C sharp. Okay, but if you say that, you will get a question for sure about for C sharp method. Okay, please watch the previous video, little lecture video, and if you tell that, oh, I took Java class, lab class, I did not practice C sharp, that will be an acceptable cause. And there will be a link list for link list. Uh, okay, do not memorize, but please understand 
<coughs> append, repend, and delete methods at least. Okay. And for singly linked list, not double linked list for this test as well as. And for the stack, how many uh, methods we have for stack? Push, pop, and pick. Okay, that's good. And queue, how many uh, methods do you have? Mainly two. And queue and DQ. So here is 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 3, 8. 8 basic operations everybody should know. And you will get at least 4, 5, 6 from this 8. Okay? <coughs> methods. So anyone has any question about this? Okay, a student, uh, we got an email from, uh, not my section, maybe from another section, that the students said they are confusing what kind of questions will be for test 3. Are you really feeling that con confusion? Did you get some hints that what kind of questions it will be in for test 3? Are you okay? You have any questions? You have any question? Okay, thank you. So let us start tonight. Our topic is exception handling. It's really, really an interesting topic, but it is an important. Okay. <coughs> so exception, <coughs> exception, ex ex an exception. You understand better as in English. In English, in plain English, an exception means an unexpected or unusual or irregular occurrence, right? That happens very rare, okay? But that happens unexpectedly. For instance, an accident. It may happen any time, an accident may ha happen any time while we drive our car or even when we walk. Okay, this is why every, for every second for, we need to be careful. We need to keep our eyes open, right? So that we don't do any accident or we don't face any accident. Similarly, an error may happen in our program at any time for any uh, uh, instruction. So we need to be careful. While writing our program, we need to be careful so that uh, in our program, we don't face any exception. But handling exception is sometimes is critical because exception does not happen in run in compile time. You know we have we have uh, seen that there are mainly two kinds of error: compile time error and run time error. So compile time errors when we use Eclipse or NetBean or more run uh, IDEs, we see the compile time errors as soon as we type in our codes, right? We see that compile time error. So it is easy to see compile time error at to handle because without mm, fixing compile time errors, you cannot run your program, okay? But like an accident, an accident happened at any time without any warning most of the time. So a compile, a, there are another kind of errors that is called runtime error. That may happen unexpectedly if you do not be careful or if you do not take sufficient measures in your program. So that is called an exception. An exception happens during runtime. Okay. So in our program code, we need to uh, write some extra codes or <coughs> in order to handle unexpected uh, exceptions so that if we get an exception, we can handle that exception. So that one thing that everybody should un remember that an exception occurs only programs execution time, not in, in compile time, okay?
Okay. So uh, we discussed this one. Exception uh, happens during program execution time. And exception handling enables us to write a clear, robust, and fault tolerant programs. That means if you get a fault or an error, you can tolerate that. You can accept that fault or you can resolve that. Okay. <coughs> so Okay, I will tell you a story about uh, exceptions, exception handling in our uh, real life. So just look at the uh, simple picture. Okay. For instance, let us consider that we know that uh, in about 50 years ago or 100 years ago, there were most of the highways were single lane, right? Even nowadays, there are some highways, but there are some freeways that are single lane. Think about a highway or even a local way like this. So if an accident happened on the lane that is where there is that red big truck, if an accident happened, any kind of accident, for instance, if the a truck is uh, get stuck, engine is broken or something, then what will happen? This road, this lane will be blocked, right? So in our daily life, this is an accident. In case of a programming, this is kind of situation, an exception. Okay, so then how do we handle this kind of accident in our daily life? We use alternative routes, right? So maybe both incoming and outgoing vehicles will use the other, will share the other lane. Okay. This is a typical scenario, right? So in order to <coughs> so face and resolve this kind of issue, in modern highways or freeways are expanded with multiple lanes. For instance, if an accident happened on this on the leftmost lane, then people use the other lanes, right? Second lane and third lanes they use. Okay? In that way we can avoid traffic situation. Right? So in, in our real life we can do that. <coughs> so in addition to these multiple lanes in modern freeways you know that there is an emergency lane that are used for special people only for police officers and or their fire trucks or ambulances right if in any at any case if all of the lanes are blocked by an accident then the some people use that emergency lane Okay, so that is an, an additional measure that we check in our daily life. So this is a scenario of exception handling in our daily life. Sometimes people ask, okay, so in an interview that, okay, so that give us, they can ask a question like, give us a scenario or example of uh, an exception handling in our real life that has no relation with programming. Sometimes I face this, I, ask, I was asked this type of question. Okay, so this is a, which should be a good and acceptable example. Okay, I will come back to this, uh, this scenario later. So now, let us go through uh, <coughs> this program. Okay. In this program, if we run this program, let me run this program, actual, actual program. So your section is section three.
Okay. So if we run this program, what happened? Or what may happen? We see that we have this program has no error, no compile time error. Apparently, it seems that this program is good, right? It is a very simple program. I have a public class and I have a main method. This is a Java program and this is pretty simple, with, similar with will be in, in C sharp. In C sharp, you need to change only this line, console.write line, okay? Otherwise, everything is same. Okay, so these are four integer variables, x, y, z, and d. So I have my x equal to 5, y equal to 10, and z equal to 15. But at some point, if I do d equal to z divided by y minus 2z, y minus 2x, then what will happen? It will get an undetermined value, right, for d? divided by zero. So, and so apparently, although there is no compile time error for this program, so if I run my program, then an exception will happen, an error will occur at this point. So as soon as at, an error will happen at this point, my program will be terminated at this point. And the remaining course will not be executed. Okay, so let us see if this line goes smoothly, then I should get at least my hello friend output, right? If this program uh, goes smoothly, then I should get that output, but I sh will not get it. The reason is that on the line number 12, I have an exception occurrence over here that will terminate my program execution. And after that, after, on, after executing line number 12, actually without executing line number 12, when it faces on line number 12, then my program will show that exception in thread main, okay, main is my method name, and java.lang.arithmetic exception, Okay, this is an exception within Java length package and the exception name is division by zero and the exception is in my package. This is exception handling my package name is exception handling my package name here, you see. And on my, this is my class name. Okay, and this is main and this is uh, my class name and the dot java line number 12 actually it says we will see that line number 12 so by seeing the line number 12 we should know that there is on line number 12 there is an exception okay <laughs> so <coughs> this is why <coughs> line number 12 was not executed and apparently li other the lines below line number 12 will not be executed either. So this is a common scenario. Sometimes you see that when you you are running an application, sometimes your application crashes. It closes the program, closes the application without any warning, right? You see that? When you run an app sometime, or when you try to run an application, even desktop or on internet web-based application sometimes you see that your program terminates sometime without giving any error message that is due to an exception unhandled exception sometimes you see that even if the exception is severe it will restart your computer but modern operating systems are robust, so it's rarely you will see an exception that will, that can terminate or restart your operating system. Rarely you will see, but sometimes it happens. Okay. So since there is an exception on this line number 12, so we need to handle this exception. 
Okay, how to handle this exception? There are some ways to handle this exception. It is called, uh, there are some ways, okay, that to handle this exception. This is an exception handling procedure. Actually, we need to use, so for instance, the procedure is that performance task, if the preceding task, the task before this, uh, this task, did not execute correctly, perform error processing, then go this way, perform next task, and repeat that, actually that same thing. This is a normal pseudocode or technique of exception handling. So in modern programming languages, C++, uh, so Java, Python, Kotlin, and uh, um, C Sharp, uh, there are some exception handling uh, methods and classes built in in the program. For instance, you will, in Java, there is uh, within Java .lang package, package, there are some existing exception handling classes and methods that are used to handle most common exceptions. But sometimes these existing methods are not sufficient enough to handle exceptions, all of the exceptions. So this is why sometimes we need to develop our own exceptions handling class and methods in order to handle exceptions. So by the end of this uh, topic, chapter, you will learn how to handle exceptions, how to create our own exceptions, customize exceptions. Okay. Sorry, this is the actual slide. It has some codes uh, that are too tiny, but here I have added. So, exception class hierarchy in Java. So, in java.lang package, you see, remember that there is an object class. That is the great, great, great parent class that contains some uh, built-in methods. Under that class, there is a subclass that is called throwable. On that throwable class, there is a, a other classes, error class, exception class. Under exception class, there are subclasses, runtime exceptions, other exceptions. So there are this, actually this hierarchy is more complicated. So if I go through this uh, hierarchy, is more actually it is uh, more expanded. You see that. <coughs> Under runtime exceptions, there are other kinds of exceptions. Illegal argument exception, index out of bound exception. You are familiar with this array index out of bound exception, right? So if you have an array of 10, size 10, if you want to access 11th element or 10, 12 elements, then you will get this kind of exception. And a few minutes ago, I showed you a program that showed arithmetic exception. That is division by zero. There are some other exceptions, for instance, null pointer exceptions, or file not found exceptions. Like these are the common exceptions. Okay. Likewise, in C sharp, there is a exception hierarchy class, class hierarchy. The top level is called exception, there, there are application exceptions, system exceptions, and there are also subclasses. So if we understand the common uh, methodology of exception handling, then we should be good to handle our exceptions. So the uh, the the process of exception handling is to put uh, the suspicious codes, that means the code that might generate an exception within a try block, within a try block, and use 
at least one that means one or more cache blocks just right after the try block so if the try block if an exception happens within the try block then the try block will pass that exception to the cache block and the cache block will receive or cache the exception and handle it accordingly that is the term that is a straight forward method okay we will go through this quickly so this is just uh, the exception handling uh, process just <coughs> If you go through this exception handling, then we will see that, like in a code that in a program that, for instance, this program has exception. You see that. Uh, can anybody guess that what is the exception for this one? The exception here actually the read method. If you read use a read method, system dot in, you need to use an exception handling uh, measures because it is expected that when you use a read method, you will use a keyboard, right? For instance, you will be you will be for instance here you are intended to enter a character number. But by mistake, you can enter, you can easily, or anyone can easily enter an, a non-character number. Because you are free to use your keyboard, right? So we, instead of in, entering a, a character, you can enter a number or a decimal number. That will not be a character, right? So in that case, it is ex it was expected that your main method will use uh, <coughs> a try or cache block within this code. I will come back this program later, but let us try with the simple program. That so uh, here is the syntax of try and class cache block. So the try block will use curly brackets, and within the curly brackets, you will put the code that may, might generate exception and right after the try block you will use some code cache block at least one cache block okay the cache block will contain exception type and according to the cache block exception type it will cache the expect the type appropriate exception that happened in the try block and whatever measure you take within the cache block that measures will be executed happen okay and the cache block you can have multiple cache blocks okay each of the cache blocks will be different in terms of the cache argument type this kind this is kind of method overloading right you can have multiple methods like this, you consider that cat is a method so with different argument type you may have multiple cat statements right okay <clears throat> so if there is no exception happen the try block will cat block will not be executed The cache block will be executed only and only if there is an appropriate type of exception happens in the try block. Then it will be executed. Otherwise, it will not be happen. Okay. So you can have multiple cache blocks. For instance, let me see. You can have multiple cache blocks. You see that this is a different exception type and this is another exception type. Okay. 
and in addition to the cache block there may be a finally block you can have a finally block the finally block what does a finally block do no matter whether there is an exception happen in the try block or not the finally block will be executed always okay so no matter if an exception happen or does not happen in the final block what are the codes in the final block must be executed always be executed okay the final block is mainly used okay uh, this is this is the final block the final block always goes at the end of cache block so without a try cache you cannot have a final block okay mainly for instance a final block is used if you uh, use a database file if you open a file and at the end of your program before your program terminates you should close the database file right so in that case your file close operation should be, be put in the final block so no matter your exception happen or does not happen your try your final block will always be executed right okay this is one kind of uh, one kind of uh, confirmation that this clock code will be executed and you will not your program will not forget this okay so anybody has any questions so far about exception handling so this is the common way or traditional way to handle an exception what is the way in shortcut we will put the code that might generate an exception within the try block and the try block will follow it by some cache block okay you can have multiple cache statement but all of the cache statement will be different in terms of their exception type this is the exception type okay and at the end of your cache block you may have a finally statement or not remember that this finally is different than the final keyword in java there is a final keyword that is used to declare a constant likely as a variable but this finally is different than the uh, final keyword so there is that is a good interview question what is the difference between a finally and a final keyword So at this point, anybody has any question? Yes. Uh, in what scenario do you have to make the final adjustment? In what scenario we? We are going to have to make the final adjustment. Okay, I will show you in a good question. His question is that, what is your name? Uh, Gashap. Gashap. G-A-S-H-A-S-H. Gashap? Yes. Okay. So Gosh, the question is that in what scenario we use finally block. I will show you in a real program. Okay, but before that, let us go back to our uh, this figure that we were discussing. And that actually I did not finish up my story of exception handling in real life. Okay. Look, uh, give us an exception to this
So as we discuss in modern highways, okay, there are multiple lanes in order to handle unexpected accident, right? There are multiple lanes. Multiple lanes are used if there is an accident happen on 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 of this lane, then people use other lanes. Okay, so in addition to these, all of the multiple lanes. Modern freeways have a, a an emergency light. Okay, so no matter if there is an accident on this lane or not, we always keep this emergency lane empty. We cannot use this, right? If if we are not a, an emergency or special vehicle user, we are not allowed to use this emergency lane, right? No matter if there is an accident or not. So these consider that this is the fine this emergency lane is the finally blocked. So no matter if there is an accident or not, okay, so your finally your emergency lane will be empty. Will be you cannot block an emergency lane. Okay. So this in in programming scenario, okay, this is your finally block. So that means if an accident happen or does not happen, no matter, then your program will use that finally block. I will show you uh, in a program or uh, more about this shortly but uh, did you get some idea about your, your answer your question yes. okay thank you so as we see that let us go back to this program okay so that in this program we have an exception happen here right on the line number 20 but for instance if we do if we write our code differently for instance without gay getting a negative sign over here Minus sign if we get plug give plus sign. So then then this program will be fine, right? So there is no exception. Hmm. Uh, my D equal to. Okay, maybe this is in type mismatch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here? No, I think I need flow it and this should be flow it I think I need this yeah <coughs> okay there's type casting okay see it okay So, so at this point, I don't have any exception. I don't have any exception. But if I use a minus sign over here, then I will have an ex exception. <laughs> okay, but it's good that Java is using this infinity. Okay, that is is the, the built-in actually the built-in exception in Java. Okay, then actually the newest version in Java that has this exception method actually is showing that this infinity okay so in this line actually we have an exception right so let us see a program how can we cast that exception and we can resolve that exception for instance this is my code over here Okay, the way that we discussed that we have this is our suspected line, right? This is our suspected statement. It might generate an exception. So then, what do we need to do? 
we need to put this line we need to care we need to try this line with a try this line we need to put this line within a try block and we need to put an exception and a cast statement over here so if an exception happens here then whatever i want to do in this in this line in this line uh, it should be done for instance let us do that so at this point it will not get an exception okay so you see that it is not getting is not getting an exception i am showing my d value equal to 3 and actually what is happening so if since an exception happens on this line so this line will not be executed okay if an exception happens within try block that line does not executed that line is skipped okay once this line is skipped then other lines will be executed it will be here so you see you see that this one is arithmetic exception type is an exception and this is a, a class right i'm just putting an object of this type i can put give any name e or ex whatever name i give then i will use this so ex dot for the exception class there are some in the arithmetic exception class there are some built-in methods so this method print track trace it will be printing what is the current track position that means the print track trace that line is printed actually this is this printed this what is my what is the actually in this line I wanted to show <coughs> what kind of exception I faced. It faced. Okay. And after this line, I'm just giving a print line. Okay. And after this line, I'm giving two print lines. So this line is exceptional, optional. If I do not give this line, this statement, then it will not print this. Actually, then it will not print this. It will not print this, but it will print your customized customized method statement, whatever I wanted to display. But, but, you know, if I say ex dot, so in the arithmetic exception, Class, there are some built-in methods. So print tra stack trace is one of those methods. I can use there are some other methods. You see that there are some other methods. Ex dot. We will look at. We will look at this in the within the class. The methods within the class in throwable or exception you see that throwable what are in the throwable what are in the throwable we will look that only in throwable okay so actually this this arithmetic exception is the is, is built-in is a built-in if i double click over here it's, it is not coming version you see that it is it is what is this class is defined runtime exception it is the arithmetic exception class it extends java dot lang dot runtime exception okay but again if i go to the runtime exception actually i have a picture few minutes ago i showed that So this is the class hierarchy. It's an arithmetic exception. So arithmetic exception, it, its parent class is runtime exception. 
and runtime exception has parent class exception and parent and exception class has the parent class throwable okay so if i use this arithmetic exception i can call a method from runtime exception or exception class or throwable right you see that so in my code even i could write i could write here only exception the parent class then still it will work and it should print same same thing so can you guess why it is working same thing if i say arithmetic exception or only exception because you see that the class hierarchy when I say I can use, so if I use the lower level subclasses, then it will catch only that kind of exception. In you know, in other, only it will catch that kind of exception as well as it will call its parent exception. Okay, so we will go through this exception um, that when we use multiple cast statements, we will discuss that more. But so far, anybody has any questions? Is understandable exception handling? Yes. I don't have any finally block here. You said finally block, right? I don't have any finally block here, but we can use finally block. Okay. In our in our in our next few programs, we will show okay. finally blocks. Okay. Actually, this code I extracted from my book chapter, from my books. So actually in my book I have chapter 14, so in, the four, in chapter 14 I have this code. So you see that I did not change the name. So in my book actually I wrote the class name this way so that it was easy for me to track programs quickly so the which program is located where. Okay, but when you write your program you should not give a class name like this. You should give a meaningful class name. But in my book chapters, <coughs> when I wrote my books, I gave class name like this way. <coughs> I will go through this in depth, okay? But uh, so far, I was discussing the just foundational knowledge of exception handling. So everybody is okay at this point? Are you okay? So, uh, I, was, I was trying this one. So, as I told you that if an exception happens, then it will come to this this line, right? So, as I told you that if, for instance, if an exception does not happen here, if I say plus sign, right? Instead of minus, if I say plus sign here, then then there is no way that an exception will happen here, right? So in that case, let us run this program again and let us see the output. So you see that output, the difference between this run and the previous run, because these lines did not execute it. These lines were not executed, right? What is the reason? Yes. It's straightforward, right? Since the, an exception does, did not happen, so this exception statement did not execute, right? Or not executed, right? So this is the common way that is simple and simple way that how exception handling work. Mm -hmm. So the finally block actually is used. The finally block is, as as I told you, the finally block is used in order to guarantee 
that some codes must be executed whether an exception happen or does not happen okay especially that for instance networking programming after uh, executing something you need to close your connection login okay so after for instance after checking your email in a public computer you must log out from your email account right sometimes if you forget that we may forget that right so that for instance most of the browsers are most of the browsers are set up in that way that it will not remember your username and password as soon as you close the browser before the browser close closes itself it will fast log out even if you forget okay <coughs> There are some reminders, it's just cautions that, okay, so, okay, for the first reminder is that do not place try blocks around every statement that might throw an exception. It is saying that, okay, it is saying that we should, we must put only the statement that might cause an exception with the right block. Not all statements. For instance, here we have this. We have three statements here, right? There are three statements. Three statements are separated by semicolon, right? So we know that there is no possibility that these statements, these three statements, will. Uh, make an exception. So we don't need to put these three statements within this try block. I can, okay, if you do, then program will be running, there is no problem. There is no problem that your program will be running or uh, it may actually, actually it is not running here. Actually for this, since this not, this, since this did not go through. Let me put different value and let us try. Okay. Although here this program is running this way, but we should not put the statement that do not create an exception within a try block. Like, okay, so the scenario is something like this. Putting some codes in a try block is more likely uh, that you, so let, give me a story, tell me a story. Let me tell you a story. When you drive in our daily way, right? Daily life. So if we see that there is an accident in front of us, then what do we do? We took a detour, right? We take an alternative way, okay? For instance, sometimes if we see that there is an accident, like after two blocks, two lights, and if we see ahead of time, then in before we going to that accident, to that accident place, incident place, right? We take alternative way ahead of time, right? Even two two lights ahead, we take alternative way so that we can skip that traffic. Okay. A putting some code on the try block is likely that uh, that we are watching, we are keeping our eyes open. That is there any accident? If we find a yes, there is an accident, then we take a D2. We take an alternative way. But Putting all of my course in the try block is likely that, for instance, if you are driving away that every, in every signal, for instance, you are driving 10 miles from here to your home, and for instance, there are 30 traffic lights. Putting all of your statement in the try block is that you are so conscious that you are driving 
in your way and you are going to a traffic light and asking people, hey, police officer, is there any accident in front of me? <laughs> so if police officer say no, there is no accident, then you will be driving. So if, for instance, this way, so every traffic light or every stop place, you will stop and you will ask people that is there any accident? So we do not do that way, right? Because that is killing our time. That will spend our unexpected time, right? The time unexpectedly. So this way that... I'm sorry, I got the truth. Uh, uh, what? So I'm getting pain. <coughs> so what we do usually we do that if we see an accident, then we take alternative way. Otherwise, we drive smoothly. So although this is some, something like this, putting all of your codes in, in your tri block is that, that if you will be stopping at every signal and then you will be asking, is there any accident? Is there any accident in front? Is it, or you will be asking or checking. Okay? So this is why we do not put the course that will not generate an exception within the tri block. Do not put that. We should put only the statements that will generate an exception within the tri block. Understand? So this reminder is uh, saying that. And the second reminder is it is better to place one tri block and that is significant portion of code and follow each tri block with cache blocks that handle each possible exception. Okay. Another is that it is saying that you can have multiple tri cache blocks. Sometimes if needed you can have one tri block multiple tri blocks or you can have what is that called? A tri block, tri cast block within another tri cast block. So within this tri cast block, you may have another tri cast block. Okay. Let me say it here. Okay. Now we will go through checked and unchecked exception, that is types of exception. We will go through this later, but uh, how many times we have? Okay, in this slide, actually, I have added, okay, I have added few extra slides, like good interview questions. What is the difference between final, finally, and finalized keyword? Okay, so please go through these examples. But in our next class, we will cover this, uh, cover this. But today, we want to discuss another important uh, interview question. And for advanced level exception handling, that is called checked and unchecked exceptions. Before that, I want to take a few minutes break. Well, I'm getting pain on my chest. So if you get my code, please, please get my codes and then you will see there are some examples. There are some examples and what are those? For instance, this example. This program is 1407. You see that you have a one single try block and you have multiple cache statements. You see that how the cache statements are 
different in terms of the argument type, right? This is kind of what is that? Remember that? So a method with same method with multiple or different argument type is called yes, method overloading. Thank you. So it's, it's kind of method overloading. See that, okay? So <coughs> try to run this program and try to understand this. Some of this program are self-explanatory, okay? So, and what else? You see that in this program we have a try block, try catch within another try block. Okay, try catch within another try catch, and it has also finally. Okay, this is user defined uh, exceptions. We can create our own exception methods. Last three program is like this way. Okay, we have time. Maybe next week we can finish this. Uh, but today we will discuss about uh, checked and unchecked exceptions. It is self explanatory. Can you please go through these slides and then let us try to understand, try to understand this please. Remember the class hierarchy of exception class? Okay, so it says in Java distinguishes uh, between two types of exceptions. I think it's similar for C sharp as well as not only for Java, it's also C sharp. Okay. There are two exceptions are make mainly classified as two types. One type is called unchecked exception, another called is checked exception. Okay, unchecked exception are those that are subclasses of error or runtime exceptions. Okay, so remember this one. I will go through this. And it is not mandatory to use try and cache block to handle these exceptions. Because these exceptions are um, how can I tell you? I'm going this later. Let me let me go through checked exception. The checked exception are other types of exceptions. Okay, code that might generate a checked exception must be put inside a try block. Or the method must be acknowledged that the exception may occur by using throws clause. We will dis discuss this maybe tonight or in our next class.
Okay. Mainly the unchecked exceptions for us while doing program, it is not required, it is ma not mandatory to put this, uh, okay. Uh, like to put our post that might generate runtime exception within try blocks because the operating the um, the um, compiler or inter uh, interpreter itself handle this exception but the checked exception that that must be put within try and catch block let us show this checked and unchecked exception here you see the class hierarchy of uh, the, the um, exception handling is the throwable is the top level. Then after that exception class, an exception class has subclasses with the runtime exceptions and arithmetic exception, class cast exception, null pointer exception, illegal access exception, class not found exception. Actually, these these are called these are called checked exceptions. And arrows, these exception and these exceptions are called unchecked exceptions. Because most of the operating system, sorry, most of the modern compilers have its own measures to a uh, to control this exception for instance you see that remember that when i wrote this program so it handled within i don't have any uh, any exception try and cache block here but my program it handled that one you see that it handles mostly it says d equal to infinity because it got what kind of exception? It got an arithmetic exception. And this arithmetic exception is already handled within within the compiler itself. So it is not required, it is good okay, to put these ex lines of uh, this uh, code within a try block, but it's not required. Even my program did not crash. So this is an example of uh, 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 unchecked exception. And check, uh, another kind of unchecked exception is that, for instance, if I get an error, for instance, here. It is getting a compile time exception, right? So it is a compiled exception, that means actually it is an error. So no matter whether I put this code, this statement within a try block or cache block, within a try block, it will not happen. It will not help me unless I or until I fix this error. Okay. So this is why it, it, called, it says this way. It says unchecked exceptions. Unchecked exceptions are those that are or error or runtime exceptions. Okay, and we need to be concerned about this checked exception. Mainly the IO exception, illegal accept exception, class not found exception, blah blah like this. For instance, here, if we go through this, so remember that I think this this picture is better to remember. But if you want to check the class hierarchy again, remember that you can see that. We discuss this one. So it is a good interview question that what are the difference between checked and unchecked exceptions? Okay. So checked exceptions are checked by compiler. Okay. For instance, so this is a checked exception or unchecked exception? Can anybody tell me, remember? This is a checked or unchecked? Yes, this is checked, right? Arithmetic exception or type 
of type arithmetic expression of uh -uh. okay unchecked expression I'm telling that what what is my code over there what does it says Uh, we will go through this next next class but we will revisit this but please go through these examples and this everybody please get this slides okay and then get the program and then make run this program and try to understand before you come to the next class okay we will go through this in our next class and then we will discuss the other advanced topic of exception handling in the next class but I'm putting this code in uh, uh, github cd of space cd cd csd so your section is th section 3 right Git uh, commit. Okay, thank you, everybody. Have a good night, everybody.